Welcome, one and all, to another edition of the Default Show with Luby here on the Five Reasons Sports Network, brought to you by the one and only Water Cleanup of Florida. It has been interesting times down here in South Florida. We are not in the rainy season, but uh, the lovely Nicole, the storm, brought lots of rain down here. With rain can come leaks. Seen it in my home, seen it in my in-laws' home, seen it in my parents, seen it at offices. Well, don't let leaks get you down. Water Cleanup of Florida will raise you up. If you have any water issues, just call them, 954-579-0356. With over 60 years of combined experience between Michael, Robert, their entire team, the fact that they then have licensed contractors, certified, insured contractors on their staff. They not only will dry it, they'll not only fix the areas, but they'll make it look brand new. They did it to my wife and my uh, townhouse. They will do it for your home. Don't think twice. If you have any water issues, if you see any leaks, 954-579-0356, water cleanup FL, at water cleanup FL on all the socials, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, plus WCUFL.com, WCUFL.com. If you want to check out their website, Water Cleanup of Florida, if you have the schmutz, they have the guts. The Miami Dolphins recently have not been gutsy, uh, not been schmutzy at all. They've been very gutsy. The offense has carried them. Well, this weekend, finally, we got to see the defense catch up with the offense. We talked a lot about those Miami Dolphins today with both NFL agent Brett Tesler, who is the agent, to Raheem Mostert, who's having a heck of a season for the Dolphins, and John Kinjemi, who, for WFOR, does Dolphins pre-half post-game right now on the TV show with Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. The simple pleasures of this job, the way a stadium sounds when one of my players performs well on the field, the way we are meant to protect them in health and in injury. Less, more attention, caring for them, caring for ourselves in the games too. The agent to the stars, the one and only Brett Tesler. Welcome back to the show, uh, the Depot Show here. Jeff DeForest and uh, Mike Luby Lubitz on South Florida Live. Always a pleasure on these Peel Yourself Off the Mat Mondays as we reflect on the weekend's activity in the National Football League, college football, and look ahead to uh, upcoming games to welcome our uh, ultimate insider here uh, because this guy really is on the inside of what's going on in the National Football League. The agent to the stars, Mr. Brett Tesler, joins us here on the program. Brett, how are you, my friend? Doing good, man. What a wild, wild weekend of football, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, it was great. You know what? It, it, it was terrific, too, that the uh, two games that were televised here in the local market, I wasn't out at any sports bar yesterday. I was just kind of uh, watching his stuff at home. And, I mean, you had two games uh, back-to-back that were sensational in, in terms of uh, drama and, and excitement. And that followed a Dolphin game where – and we were speculating about this. You would be uh, better uh, capable of speaking about this than, than we would because uh, you talked to – Raheem Mostert, and uh, I don't know if you have other clients on the Dolphins, but uh, it, it does seem like uh, as uh, Raheem and, and now uh, uh, Jeff uh, Wilson and uh, the running game has kind of flourished a little bit the last couple of weeks. You're seeing it coming together. Uh, but while watching all of these guys on the offensive side of the Miami Dolphins uh, squad, it looks like not only are they in symmetry, but they're rooting for each other, and, and they're genuinely having a really good time out there. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know that we've sort of seen this kind of team unity and, and uh, cohesion and confidence uh, in, in the last 20 years. Uh, it, it does look like, uh, I mean, uh, all of your guys uh, out there on the Dolphins uh, offensive side of the ball are, are, are just having fun playing with each other. Yeah, uh, I mean, you can argue that the Dolphins are the best running back tandem in the NFL right now. In fact, I believe they're the only team that has two running backs with over 500 yards. Wow. Um, and as far as Raheem and Wilson's relationship, um, those guys are like brothers. You know, I, I, I've always known how fond of, uh, of Jeff Raheem is, and, you know, dating obviously back to their days with the 49ers together. And, uh, you know, they're both similar guys. It's so funny that these guys are both guys who are undrafted. These are both guys who bounced around practice squad for years until – they finally got the right opportunity to prove that, you know, they, 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 they're capable of carrying the load. And, you know, that's the thing about this league. It's just, it's, it's, it's very political in the way that obviously um, the guys who get drafted, guys who get paid, 
um, those guys always get the first opportunities. And as far as these guys who are undrafted, you know, even if a team realizes how talented they are, unfortunately, unless it's someone like the Patriots, where someone like Belichick will play whoever is the best, that's why they've been so successful over the last couple of decades. You know, in the case of the 49ers, they had guys like uh, Jarek McKinnon, who they paid a ton of money, overpaid a ton of money to, um, and he was always injured. And, you know, then there was a couple other guys that were there and, you know, another guy uh, that they had paid. And so, you know, those guys kept getting opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, where most certain Wilson, it was a very slow process to finally, you know, once there was like two or three other running backs on the team that went down with injury, once there was literally nobody else there, then these guys finally got their opportunities. And of course, the rest is history. So, um, you know, I thought it was a mistake for the 49ers to get rid of Wilson. Um, obviously, McCaffrey is a very interesting guy, a very, you know, well-rounded, talented guy. But, you know, you look at yards per carry, I mean, Wilson was doing great there. I just don't understand why you'd give up so much to actually downgrade yeah. as it relates to getting wow. yards per carry. So, I mean, it is what it is. But, I mean, you know, the stats don't lie. Um, I'm, you know, not that McCaffrey's bad, but I mean, I think we're all seeing right now how good Jeff Wilson really is. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Interesting all the way. Now, how much of this is McDaniel? Because, uh, obviously he had familiarity with both Raheem Mostert and, and uh, Jeff Wilson. And he, he already seemed to have a pretty good grasp of what to do with these guys in the passing game. Uh, but uh, how much of the success uh, would you attribute to McDaniel and the fact that, um, you know, his familiarity with these two running backs, all of a sudden, as a Dolphin running game uh, looking better than it has, uh, you know, uh, since Ricky Williams was running the football. Well, there's no doubt that when you get two guys who you've had tremendous success with, as in, you know, you've went to a Super Bowl with them and they've actually carried you to a Super Bowl in the case of what Raheem did for the 49ers. And, you know, you could have won the Super Bowl had maybe you used those guys a little more. Um Obviously, it's a plug-and-play situation. There's no learning curve. So when a guy like Jeff Wilson comes here, there's no getting to know you, period. There's no learning the playbook. There's no, uh, you know, figuring out exactly what your head coach wants or doesn't want. So from that standpoint, you know, anytime uh, any coach brings in any player who they've worked with in the past, it obviously speeds things up where you can just kind of drop them right in the deep end and watch them go. But, um, you know, the reality is there's no successful player in this league who doesn't benefit from being in the right scheme. And so whether that's, you know, the success that you're seeing the running backs have under McDaniel, the success that you're seeing Tua have under McDaniel, uh, the success that McDaniel's having with Tua and with these guys and with it's truly a a synergy. and it's one of these things where, you know, when people say, well, was, you know, was it Belichick who made Brady? Was it Brady who made Belichick? My answer is, who cares? I mean, they yeah. made each other. They wanted to, they won a ton of Super Bowls. And so, you know, when you watch a guy like Tua, I, I mean, the bottom line is this. The job that Mike McDaniel has done with him is nothing short of just perfect, just brilliant. Because... The truth is, I don't think necessarily that a guy like Tua would would, would benefit from just any scheme. Mm. You know, I don't know that Tua is going to be that drop back, you know, scan the field, sort of like what uh, what he was asked to do by Flores and, you know, what, what a lot of other coaches run. So, for example, when you watch the Chargers last night and you see Justin Herbert, um, you know, I've, I've always said – that, you know, Tua could be a good player, but, you know, he'll probably never be as good as Justin Herbert. Uh, It's hard to compare apples to oranges because they're in entirely different schemes. Now, obviously, you see the arm that Herbert has. You see the lasers he can fire, you know, 50 yards downfield and catch guys in stride or even lead them to it. Um, I don't know that Tua would necessarily be having the season he's having if he were playing in L.A. for the Chargers. And when you look at Herbert's skill set, where, again, you know, he may not have that short to intermediate accuracy timing and touch that Tua has, 
I don't know that Herbert will be having as much success with the Dolphins as Tua is having. So the bottom line is this. Uh, all these guys on the Dolphins, especially on the offensive side, are clearly in a scheme that is working very well. And there is no doubt that Mike McDaniel has to get a tremendous, tremendous amount of the, uh, of, of the respect and the adulation and the credit that he definitely deserves. Hiring this guy was truly a stroke of genius. Well, no, and we said, of course, for the Dolphins to have genius, it has to be their seventh guy. So, like, yeah. I mean, if they, it has their to be first guy mistake. would not have been as successful. <laughs> it was, like, the fifth guy yeah. that they wanted. Um, but it worked out either way. Well, And here's the interesting thing. And Defo said this. He said it, I mean, with you, but even before you came on. They look like they're having fun. And it's funny because two guys that in their sport were – I don't think they were malcontents, but guys that were me, me, me guys, Tyreek Hill, Jimmy Butler, were seen as these guys before they came to Miami, and they were put in the right situation. You've seen Jimmy Butler flourish. And now you've seen Tyreek Hill, who you ne- I never heard about this with the Chiefs. Like, he was a talent. He was fun, but it was always Mahomes' team. That's not what you're hearing with the Dolphins. Like, from the Dolphins, from everyone around them, he's a guy that he is an MVP candidate. Most people think he's the offensive player of the year. And it's not just because of his abilities on the field. It's because he is, like, guiding this team. He is taking this team with him in a way you never heard in Kansas City. And yesterday, he didn't have a great day. They barely targeted him, and he was cheering. He was celebrating. He was, for a guy that's of his talent, usually he'd be doing the Keyshawn Johnson thing. He wasn't, and it seems like no one on this team is doing that, which is the toughest thing to really have when there's success. A lot of the team, time you see ego, you haven't seen that with this team. You see this team in lockstep, and that's really impressive to me. There's no question about it, and that's something that San Francisco had as well. You know, when they had great success, again, Mostert was there, and everybody knows what a great leader and a great guy and how respected and loved he is by everybody, yep. not to mention that when he steps on the field, he's the ultimate warrior. I mean, pound for pound not a tougher guy in the league. And so that's infectious. And so other players that are around that, you know, you almost have no choice but to have fun yourself. You have no choice but to work hard yourself. Uh, You have no choice but to be tough yourself. And that's what real leadership is. They lead by example. You know, again, now you talk about Tua. Everybody knows what a leader he's been dating back to his days in Alabama. Excuse me, in Alabama. And so... Um, You know, in the case of guys like Tyreek or some of these other guys, these guys always worked hard. I mean, you know, these were very talented guys, very productive guys. Um, Tyreek has, you know, always been one of the best weapons in this league over the last five or so years in KC. Uh, And and it's a situation now where uh, it's amazing that Mahomes is still having the success he's having. He's still an MVP candidate. And so it just goes to show that, again, did Tyreek make Mahomes? Did Mahomes make Tyreek? Maybe it's just one of those situations where, you know, they just made each other, sort of like, you know, a Lennon and McCartney type thing. And so, um, but there's no question that everybody in Miami is having fun because winning is fun. And I can assure you, you wouldn't see as many smiles. You wouldn't see as much energy. You wouldn't see, you know, guys really, you know, putting their neck on the line game in and game out, play in and play out, if the team was, say, I don't know, one and eight right now, one and seven or whatever it would be. But no, the team is winning. They're beating very good teams. Uh, You know, they just gain more and more confidence by the week. And, you know, there's no question that McDaniel's a big part of it. And when Flores was here, um, you know, I personally never really cared for the approach. Um, You know, it's the approach that we've seen too many Belichick disciples try to take when they finally get a head job. And that's why you see um, guys like Josh McDaniels, guys like Matt Patricia, guys like Eric Mangini. I mean, uh, <laughs> the line goes the, on. And on. Uh, you know. Some list here. Uh, I mean, it's like yeah. shit. What, what is that? Charlie Weiss. Wow. <laughs> Phil O'Brien. Phil O'Brien. I mean, literally, we could be on the phone all day, guys. And so the bottom line is it doesn't work. It doesn't work yeah. because these guys all try to show up thinking they're Belichick, but they don't realize that Belichick has earned the right to act the way he does over the last 30 years. I mean, the guy's paid his dues. He's been with multiple teams. Uh, he's had colossal failures. And so he really learned uh, the things that ultimately made him the greatest coach of all time in, in Belichick. 
And so, you know, the thing is, these other guys don't realize that you can't immediately show up to a new city and just force your system down everyone's throat and try to force square pieces and round holes. Yep. You can't bully the media. Uh, you can't intimidate your players and, you know, have everybody operating under fear. It's just not a good environment. People just don't look forward to showing up to work every day. And on the Dolphins over the last few years, that was the case. Yep. And so, you know, Tua obviously, you know, hated Flores. And I think the results ended up showing. And so now you've got a head coach who is just a fun guy. And I'm telling you, you know, from my dealings with him, and, you know, I spoke to he, per, I spoke to him personally for hours going through the whole process of signing Mostert here when other teams were interested. And I just – it's just every time I, I got off the phone, I, I just had to tell my wife, my son, whoever, like, this guy is unlike anybody I've ever talked to in 25 <laughs> years as an agent. Yeah. He just sounds like a little, he sounds like, you know, just your little, you know, buddy down the hall. He sounds like, you know, he looks like a guy that should work at Best Buy. Um, <laughs> he's amazing. It's a classic. It really I mean, is a classic. I, I mean, really, there's just uh, nothing. I can see you guys getting along. Nothing, uh, did you invite him out to the Capitol Grill for one of those – yeah, we never got the chance, but hopefully that'll happen one day. But, I yeah. mean, he's the kind of guy you would genuinely want to do that with. Yeah. He's the kind of guy that's, like, just so sincere and just so real. Mm. Like, you know, players can immediately see through phoniness. They could see through phoniness in coaches. They could see through phoniness in teammates. They could see through phoniness in the media. They could see through phoniness in an agent, you know. Athletes and, 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 and football players tend to be very instinctive people. Mm -hmm. And so when this guy comes in, you can just sense that what you see is what you get. And he's a very vulnerable guy. Um, you know, he's had some things in the past that he's had to overcome that have been well documented. And so, you know, people respect that. People appreciate someone like him. He's real. He's not somebody who's, who's dictating from a position of just such power uh, it, 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 it's just a real, genuine, just synergy and partnership and just a great working environment between the boss and his employees to where they're all in this together. He's not that much older than a lot of these guys. Um, and again, just the way he deals with people is something this league has 100% never seen before. Coincidental, huh? Stephen Ross gets suspended all of a sudden. The GM looks like a genius. The coach uh, is the ultimate hire. Modern day, uh, you know, coming of uh, Vince Lombardi. I mean, uh, uh, you know, the team's happy. They're all high fiving. I, I don't know how many different <laughs> touchdown celebrations we've seen from the Dolphins. I mean, you got everything from uh, Jalen Waddle's Waddle to this guy rocking the baby uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, uh, your man Mostert with that slide. What is? Oh, that's the surfing thing, right? Yes, yes, yes. He's a surfer. The surfing thing. Yeah, because uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he, he grew up as a surfer in Daytona yeah. Beach. You know, some people don't know this about him, but he was actually a top surfer growing up, and he was sponsored and actually had opportunities to pursue it professionally. So that's just sort of a little tribute to his past. And, um, you know, it's been great to see him scoring a bunch of touchdowns here over the last few games. And, uh, again, it's, it's just an amazing, amazing situation where – Jeff Wilson is genuinely happy to see Raheem do great things. Raheem is genuinely happy to see Jeff do great things. Uh, I think these receivers are happy to see each other do well. Yep. The running backs are rooting for the receivers. And, you know, a lot of those plays start with the fake handoffs, especially the most, which wind up freezing the defense, yep. which, you know, when you wind up seeing the throw to Tyreek or Jalen that, you know, seems so open, that's part of the reason why. And obviously these receivers are opening things up for the running backs in terms of just what threats they are downfield and how it takes the top off of defense and, you know, opens things up underneath for some of the intermediate passes that you're seeing to a tight end or to a running back. So things are just clicking. I mean, I could not imagine how things could possibly be better for that team offensively. And, you know, the great thing about the Dolphins is they're a very, very good team. There's no doubt about it. I mean, they're having legitimately – very very good season they can still get a lot better oh, yeah, the I mean you yeah. see some areas on that team that you see some areas that you know can improve and that you know can be addressed this off season. and with Tua just having you know another year in this system like no matter how good you're doing 
whenever you've been doing something for such a short amount of time. I mean, two has only played for this guy for two months. You know, when you start to get into two years, three years, four years, look out. Mm -hmm. And as this team bolsters their defense and as this team fortifies the offensive line um, with the weapons they have on offense, you know, an embarrassment of riches as it relates to, uh, you know, key weapons. Um, It could be scary what this team does. I'm talking legitimately, you know, Super Bowl contender to hopefully oh. odds on favorite to win the Super Bowl over the coming you know, year. My heart. I'm grabbing my like heart shocked. here, Brent. They're uh, in like the, the second in the AFC watching. right yeah. now. I mean, they are Super Bowl yeah. contenders. This is I mean. the big one, Elizabeth. <laughs> we welcome in the handsome one himself, who uh, once again was all over the uh, Dolphin coverage yesterday, uh, all, all platforms and formats, welcoming John Kinchemi, as uh, we're happy to do. Brought to you by Jimmy John's Big Chill, mile marker 104. Overseas Highway in Key Largo. All right, uh, we've been crowing about the Dolphins all day. Uh, one of the things that, that you absolutely have to love about it, I mean, we saw more balance on offense yesterday than we've seen, uh, you know, maybe in forever uh, with this team. Uh, Tua is enjoying himself. He's having a ball. McDaniel's philosophies seem to be working out brilliantly. Uh, they're running the football. They now have a tandem of running backs. I don't know that they're the best tandem in football, but you know, I mean, they're the fastest. What they're doing, they yeah, the they're fun. Yeah, they are wow. fun. All right, and, and and we know that offensive lines, as bad as they may be, as maligned as they may be, when they get a chance to block and open up the running game, all of a sudden it seems like a panacea for success in, in blocking for the pass. And uh, you know, you have a, a patchwork offensive line going from patchwork to being celebrated as doing a really good job. Uh, I, I don't know that I've seen a Dolphin offense in sync like this uh, since Danny Boy. Yeah, late I mean, 80s, 20 years. early 90s. What, what, what do you think? Is that a fair statement? I think it is. I mean, there was a couple years where you could pick out and go, wow, the offense was pretty good. You know, it's, get, it's getting there. The right? Pennington year was okay. Were, I mean, but not having the blend of run and pass, as, yeah. as you said, Defo. I think that, you know, no matter who you play, you have to play the teams on your schedule. And the Dolphins, we, we said this at the beginning of the year. They were going to start to make hay – once they passed, you know, the the midway point of the season where they had some teams that were going to be poor, you know, they weren't going to be, uh, they weren't going to have winning records. And and that's what happened. You know, you hit Detroit, you hit Chicago, you hit Cleveland, you get one more in Houston next or in after the bye week, you add those teams up right now, they have 10 wins. You put Houston in there, they have a total of 11 wins together, those four teams. So you would think the Dolphins should take advantage of that. The one thing that I didn't see coming was that Miami was going to be this good. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think they would be this explosive. I didn't think one person in in Tyreek Hill was going to make this team that explosive. Well, he carried this team early in the year, but now it's starting to get balanced out a little bit because the offensive line and the defensive lines are starting to dominate. And I really think that that's, you know, that's been the, the the juggernaut to this offense, you know, two is getting rid of the football on time and on target, but he hasn't been touched. His uniform was dead white yesterday. He didn't touch the ground. Yeah. And those running backs. Wow. They run hard and they're fast. There, there were huge uh, holes, holes. cracks on the sides (laughs) by the tackles and the ends. They, they were flying. They were at top speed, you know, in their second or third step. And they were into the secondary to that second level before Cleveland could even put a hand on him. I think Mostert ran 21 yards for a touchdown. Yeah. No one touched him. Never touched him. He skipped so, into the end zone. Yeah. It looked like Deion so, Sanders going in. It was, it was amazing. It was fun. I mean, that, that was fun to watch a, as a Miami Dolphins fan. So you have to you have to give a lot of credit to Mike McDaniel and what he's doing in terms of putting people in positions to make plays and putting this team in position to make it look effortless because it has looked pretty seamless on offense. I mean, they – they're scoring. They're not punting. They didn't punt yesterday. Not once. You know, and maybe against the Bears in, in Detroit, maybe once or twice, they were scoring. They're scoring points. And and that's fun to watch. And defensively, you get after the quarterback. Jacoby Brissett comes back to South Florida. You sack him three times. I, I don't think Cleveland scores in that first half had it not been for the opening kickoff yep. that gets the ball close to the 50-yard line. You know, the defense was was fairly dominant as well. And, you know, that was just a – it's been a team effort over the last couple of weeks. The offense has carried this team uh, in certain weeks. The defense early, you know, ha- had their moments to shine. But now that's starting to be complimentary football, and if we can kick some extra points, we might be dangerous. <laughs> 
Well, that, that's the only downfall is their kicking game is become. And, I, and I have confidence in Jason Sanders. Uh, I legit, say that just I because I watch him in practice. The kid's phenomenal. Um, I, I think he's got the right mindset to do it. I just think that he needs something good to happen to him where, you know, you, it's before halftime and you got a 48 yarder. He needs to go nail it, jog into the locker room, have some confidence about it, and he'll be set for the remainder of the season. Well, what's interesting, and you said it, is, uh, look, it, it, if you're watching Dolphin games, they have been sort of scary the last few weeks. The Lions were able to do whatever they wanted for about two and a half, three quarters. The Bears, <laughs> Justin Fields did whatever he wanted the entire game. And yesterday, it started out that way. And Jacoby Brissett, who we know well, that first quarter and a half was not fun. They moved the ball well. They didn't score, but they moved the ball well. But then it was like Bradley Chubb said, all right, I'm here. And from near the end of the second quarter on, it was a party. Like, I, I, I was in awe of their offensive line and their offense, but we've seen a lot of that so far. We've seen glimpses. We haven't seen the Dolphins look, the defense look like that at all this year. The defense, Xavier Howard getting annihilated. Javon Holland sort of coming back to the pack. Um, the linebackers looking lost. The defensive line doing nothing. Agba was out yesterday, and you wouldn't even know. Like, Ingram. Yeah. Phillips. Chubb, it was like a party at the quarterback from that middle third quarter on. They had one nice drive, and outside of that, they just shut him down. And it was like, okay, if the defense can look like this, <laughs> like, oh, this team could be very interesting because you're watching the Chargers sort of, eh, Broncos, eh, the Ravens. Yeah. Like, no one's scared. Even the Bills are having the struggles, and the Dolphins are just getting better and better and better. I'm trying to reserve my confidence and my hope, but. You watch that team, man, and it's not just fun on offense. They're fun, on, and they're having fun, and that's something we haven't seen on both sides of the ball in my entire life. Like, I don't – I mean, I guess as Zach Thomas, Jason Taylor years, they had fun, but their offenses were dreadful. So, like, you'd, you'd go and have sh- – hold a team to seven, and you'd lose – 10 to 7, yeah, 13, you know, like, yeah, 13, so 10 like, or something, yeah, like, or you'd lose 7 6 or whatever, you know, like, it, I, I'm not only hopeful, I'm just watching this team and I don't have to stress, and it's such a weird feeling to watch this team just feed off of each other. And you said a complimentary football, not just the passing and running game, but the defense and the offense in a way that I thought we'd get there in year two or three. I didn't think we'd be there halfway through year one. Well, they made a lot of moves to get there in year one. I mean, this team, you know, when you go out and get Tyreek Hill and you go out and get Bradley Chubb and now you get a a Jeff Wilson who looks like a premier back, uh, you know, this team has pushed all the chips down to the, you know, the middle of the table. And they're saying, you know what, this is our year. And we have probably a couple of years together to to win one. Let's do it now. And let's try to keep this thing together. Because to your point, Luby, not only was the pressure from the edge on Bradley Chubb coming off the edge and and Phillips coming (laughs) and Wilkins coming from the middle and Sealer, you know, forcing a fumble. They had some pennant. They had some devastating hits behind the line of scrimmage. Landon Roberts decked Chubb early in the game for a couple yards loss. And, and, and actually Jerome Baker had one too. So it's been a little bit of everybody. And you see once the defensive line starts to creep in and dominate a little bit more, the defensive backs are getting better. Well, I was going to say, who's Bethel? Like the, the cornerbacks have been such a struggle. Between Kohu and Bethel, I'm like, who's Byron yeah. Jones? Like, Bethel was everywhere yesterday. And I haven't even heard of that dude. Yeah, I, you know what? I had to look on my flip card. I was like, 20? <laughs> who's 20? I, I, I had no idea, you know? And he made a couple plays there in the second half. You're like, all right, Bethel. It's Bethel. Good job. You know? But, uh, yeah, Byron Jones... I don't know. I, right now, I don't. I don't know, and I don't really care if, if, if he comes back. To be honest with you, because if he does, it'll strengthen the team. If not, this this nucleus of young guys seem to have it under control. So the only the only kryptonite I can see for this team uh, is traveling to the cold weather yeah. and seeing yeah, yeah, how yeah. Tua handles the football and handles the passing game, and and they handle kind of just playing that way you know they have only two opportunities before the postseason in buffalo and in new england so i i want to i want to see you know the team do that but by that time if they take care of business you know they should be in a position where you could drop one or two and still get to 10 11 12 wins how are you feeling about our eight and a hook, John? I, I know we had. <laughs> I mean, eight and a hook. I changed, I mean, Defoe. Remember, lengthy I was discussions. Not, yeah, you were very uh, skeptical. I was not. I was not on board early. In no, the I know. Uh, you, I, you, you were I, skeptical. Well, maybe that. that was preseason. I can't remember, yeah. but I did change before the regular season. 
You did. Uh, but it looks good, I, and that's the problem. It looks too good. I mean, uh, <laughs> it looks no. too good. you would have to think you're a cinch gonna, to go two and I five. I mean, come on. They have seven wins. I'm not going to mush <laughs> this for you, Gifo. I'm not going to say a word. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to feel too good about it, but I, I'm doing the math. It's two and five. And then that air of invincibility that some of those teams uh, you mentioned, you know, late season games on the road against New England and Buffalo. Well, both of them uh, don't have that, uh, you know, I don't know that New England did, but, uh, you know, certainly Buffalo is not invincible as they appear right. to be because they managed to absolutely, you know, uh, uh, just mangle at that game uh, yesterday, uh, you know, when they had everything going in their direction and, and somehow managed to lose the game. And, uh, you know, there, there was some talk. I don't know how much, you know, you could really read into this, but, uh, you know, where, where uh, Stefan Diggs was saying, ah, well, we, we, we don't know how to finish games anymore and all of this, which, you know, they lost two in a row in, in kind of uh, ugly fashion uh, to fall to six and three. And, and then, you know, the Packers, uh, you know, no dynamo. They won yesterday. Mm. San Francisco was, certainly has its vulnerability. Mm, the Chargers. Uh, you know, and, and, and is not any offensive juggernaut. The Chargers, uh, you know, can mm, be scary. Dangerous. So, uh, you know, all you know, of that you know stuff where you're looking the at the AFC, schedule. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. You know, the team in the AFC, I, I think Baltimore has the DNA yeah. to, to beat some teams in the playoffs just because of the way right. they play. Uh, you know, Buffalo, obviously, Kansas City, obviously. But if, if Baltimore gets in the mix and they have a home game, yeah. that's, you know, that's a tough environment to, to uh, sure. get your team to go up and, and play and not beat yourselves, you know, not, not kind of turn it over, not – you know, too many false starts and holding calls that, that back you up. But uh, the Dolphins at home right now, uh, I, I, I think they're really, they're really, really a dominant team and should be a favorite at home. Going on the road's a different animal. Yeah. I was totally surprised that in the Detroit and Chicago game, and even yesterday, it's like three and a hook or four points. It's, yeah. it's like Pretty I, I felt that was going to be a massacre yesterday. Yeah. Wow. And it didn't materialize because it was only 17-7 at halftime. But in those other two games on the road, I just thought it was going to be a play out a lot more like yesterday where the Dolphins would pull away in the second half and and get that, you know, two touchdown, 17 point spread and win easily. And it didn't happen, but they, they played, they kept playing, you know, that was good to see. They kept playing, they kept competing and kept making plays that demoralized Chicago and demoralized Detroit. Well, such a thin margin too. I mean, we're seeing this, uh, you talk about parity in the NFL, I mean, even teams with lousy records uh, are a threat. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it seems like uh, many games uh, you, you, you get, uh, you know, uh, the so-called Howard Cosell ebb and flow back and forth. And, and then ultimately they're decided uh, sometimes, unfortunately, on a very bad call, which, uh, you know, even in uh, Buffalo, I mean, how, how did they let that call stand where, you know, you, I don't know that it was subject. They didn't get a chance to replay it for some reason where yeah, you probably didn't see this either, but uh Guy makes a catch. He bobbles the oh, ball. Oh, out of bounds? Before. Yeah, and, and that's what put him in field goal range so they could tie the game in regulation. Uh, now, they ended up, uh, the right team uh, ended up, you know, winning uh, if you wanted to consider that call so atrocious that it would have affected the outcome of the game. But, I mean, all of these games, you know, even when the Dolphins were kind of meandering against uh, some of the teams that you suggested, they, they were still winning. They, they were coming yeah. up with a winning formula, and, and that's really a giant that's team in the national teams football. That's what do. Yeah. yeah, good teams find a way to win those games. And, you know, you're down uh, – what was it? They were down twice. I think Couple it was either times, 17 yeah. or 21 points to Baltimore. You know, and you feel like they're never going to dig out of this one. Yeah, and they find no, a way was, to, to dig out and, and win the game. That was, that was uh, absolutely some comeback. All right, we want to get into uh, some of the college football happenings uh, over the weekend with John Kinchemi. And uh, I, I'm feeling pretty comfortable about the uh, eight and a hook, uh, the over. Uh, and it's rare that we make a recommendation – before the season starts, it turns out to and come to fruition. They have seven games left, and they just need two wins. <laughs> I, I hope. Yeah, I mean, if we lose this one, John, I mean, come on, there is no God. <laughs> just forget it. Look, talking Super Bowl may be a little early for the Miami Dolphins, but here's the deal: like I said, the Defo, they are seven and three. They are sitting atop the AFC East. They are second in the AFC, and they have a bye week where they're actually getting pretty healthy right now. They have another, they have two weeks to get healthier, and after that, they face a Houston Texans team that is dreadful. So hopefully that gets them day in three. We've seen with Tua, they're undefeated this year. When Tua starts and finishes the game, they're undefeated. Their offense 
is not only been scintillating in the passing game, finally this weekend, Mike McDaniel, the run game was supposed to be a big part of this team's success. Well, they were mauling. That offensive line was tremendous. It looked like what you saw with Mike McDaniel and the 49ers when they ran rough shot. And Raheem Mostert set an NFC Championship game record running. Well, Jeff Wilson joins in on the fun, and I don't know who's the lead back. At times, Wilson looked better. Mostert was right there with him, if not better. Uh, it's interesting to see the Dolphins have two backs that look real deal. And then the passing game has been spectacular all year. What's funny is the running game was so good yesterday that Tyreek Hill and Waddle didn't get it going till the second half, and it didn't matter. After that first quarter where they struggled a little bit, the Dolphins' defense woke up, picked up where the offense was carrying them, and it was just a show. And the Dolphins won by double digits easily yesterday versus a Browns team that had been playing much better. It's fun to see the Miami Dolphins look like that, where they're not only exciting, they're not only entertaining on offense, which we haven't seen since the heyday of Marino. They're fun and exciting on defense as well. Like And Bradley Chubb, who started slow, last week didn't play a lot. First half didn't do much. Second half, it was a party with Chubb, Phillips, and Melvin Ingram meeting at the quarterback quite often. You saw Bethel in the secondary have a really good game. We've seen Kohu all year. Xavier Howard has had his struggles. Well, he played really well yesterday. And that Dolphins defense, which has been struggling, I mean, just to be brutally honest, has not played well. Uh, the last few weeks, played tremendous yesterday. The Miami Dolphins right now are playing as good as anyone. And Tua, the very, very, very maligned because he didn't have any talent around him and didn't have a coach that believed in him, has played amazing football this year. Is as good right now at, at playing, at playing at least, as good as any quarterback in the NFL. It is exciting to be a Dolphins fan, and I cannot wait to see what they have going forward. I cannot wait for you to check out what we have going forward as today, talking Dolphins, talking greatness, while we talk with one of the great Dolphins of all time, Larry Zonka, on our podcast today. Just check out Believe.com, B-L-E-A-V.com. Search after hours. Each and every morning, check us out on South Florida Live, 7 to 9 Live. Look up on Google or YouTube, South Florida Live, Google or YouTube, The Default Show with Luby. And check us out most days right here with our South Florida content, The Default Show with Luby, on the Five Reasons Sports Network. From the newly renovated sports bar to the beautiful bayside views captured at the Tiki Bar, Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill has it all. Located at mile marker 104, the Big Chill also offers waterfront dining while experiencing breathtaking sunset views of the Florida Keys. It's simply the hottest spot in the Keys to cool off. That's Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill at mile marker 104 in Key Largo. For more information, call today at 305 305- Four five three nine zero six six. These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers Raw Bar and Grill in the Plantation because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup. All you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have their amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers, Raw Bar, and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home. 